Welcome everybody to Got A Lot In Our Minds. My name is Stevie B. You can follow me on Instagram at Stevie B underscore pod. Uh, I'm on Twitter at Stove 11890. And I check those about once a week. Thank you very much. <laughs> My co-host. What's going on? I'm Kells. You can find me at Kells55 or the business account Iconic Visions. And then obviously got a lot on our minds. And today we have a very special guest all the way from our high school days. Uh, he was a running prodigy, Marty Hecker. Marty, take it away. Hey, hey guys. Very nice to be here. I feel like it's like a little Washingtonville reunion. Um, so yeah, I'm also from Washingtonville, New York. Um, and I guess, I mean, I don't actually know my handles for Twitter and Instagram by heart, but if you Google my name, you could probably find me on there. They pop right up. <laughs> yeah. I Googled you. You are also a time traveler, by the way, just so you know. Oh, really? Oh, the uh, priest? Yeah. <laughs> See, you know. <laughs> you know. Oh, I know all about the priest. Yeah. <laughs> He's the most famous Marty Hacker. Uh, uh, but, you know, close second here. I was Google, I Googled you and um, I'm like, no shit. He was a priest from like 1890 to like 1930 or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, a, I swear to God, the real yep. thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what's even funnier is um, I've gotten many texts in, over the years because I think that priest was like somewhere in Pittsburgh. Yes. And- Duquesne University is, is in Pittsburgh, and one of their like buildings is named like the Martin Hacker Building. So it's literally written on one of their big school buildings. And I've gotten texts like, "Like, dude, have you seen this?" I'm like, "It's pretty cool. I mean, that's a, not a name you see on buildings ever." But right. it's funny that like over the years, I've gotten a picture of that same building like a dozen times. <laughs> just you should just, just run, running like, into it. are you, I was, like I said, I listened to the pod, other podcasts. Are you living in Philly? Did I catch that right? Or are you living yeah. somewhere else? Yeah. Yeah. You're in I'm Philly. In, All right. I'm in, I'm in medical school at Thomas Jefferson, which is in the center of Philadelphia. So we live, we live in, in uh, South Philly. So a little oh, okay. close yeah, stadiums and stuff. Um, That's pretty dope. Mm-hmm. It's but cool. you should you should one day just like take the trip. I mean, I I don't I'm not exactly sure how far Philly is uh, from Pittsburgh that area, but just walk like in like hours. with like your ID, just be like, I own the place. You know? <laughs> this is mine. Like, this is all me. This is all mine. <laughs> Got to take the the traditional selfie in front of it. You know, you know, I've been to Pittsburgh a couple times, but I have yet to actually make it to that building. But that should be on my uh, my to do list. You should go in like, <laughs> like. Oh, it's it's there. It's in my name, and they're like, "What? Like I was him? I've been reborn." <laughs> like uh, it all, man. And like play a part. Like walk in and like a, like get like a priest robe, everything from like a Halloween costume. Like, like really sell it. Yeah, to, to like the one security guard who like, yeah. <laughs> that's probably there, and just trip him the fuck out. Like what the <laughs> fuck's going on? Oh man. So what's going on? How are you? Good. Good. It's been, uh, you know, I feel like everyone's not in the same boat these days. The old, mm. the old COVID bug running around, but um, mm-hmm. otherwise, like things, you know, things are going pretty well. I mean, I've I've actually been pretty unhindered as far as like school goes um, for the for a while now. Um, we've been back in the hospital, back in clinics, doing all that fun stuff. Uh, just a little extra, you know, face shields and masks, and uh, mm. that's pretty much it. Now. We we can get down to brass tacks. I just want to say congratulations on all the accomplishments in life. Um, winning the the marathon project um, it's just been incredible to watch your journey over the years and just see you develop into. I mean, well, literally you're a prodigy. So we were always kind of like, like save this kid, like do it. <laughs> just always be like protect I know, Martin I at just, all costs. I just always marveled at like how this eighth grader was beating me when I was like in 10th grade, you know, just literally destroying me. And it's just been awesome to watch your, your journey so far. No. Do we, do we lose you? We may have lost Marty. Stand by. Stand by. Production issues. (laughs) We're back. We're back. back. Hey, baby. (laughs) Sorry about that. No, you're good. You I've been all right for a long time now. And of course, today's the day. Um, but I did catch what, what what you were saying there. So thank you very much. It's been it's been cool. Like, I mean, I feel like, like it really all started in, in, in middle school and high school being surrounded by you guys and everyone 
just being school not making fun of me too much so uh, <laughs> I think that's what made me love running and it, it was, as far as that part of my life has went now Marty Payne just for the for the show and for the listeners for the five people that listen to our podcast um <laughs> uh paint paint the picture of who you are what you do because you are you are a humble person and it is much appreciated you're a hard working person but you are a man amongst boys when it comes to running mm-hmm. so like Chris said, you you just won um, that marathon, and then you also was it the seventh fastest time? Uh, it was the uh, seventh fastest time on record eligible courses um, of all time for the U.S. list. That is so that incredible. Was, that incredible. Was cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, I, I, I can give you a little tangent just, you know, because I guess, you know, not a lot of people know the whole running world and what, what goes on in it, but... Yes, please, um, like, give you us know, a There is breakdown. such thing as professional running. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there, there is such thing as professional running. Um, and it's it's not too different from other professional sports, just with, like, the smallest fraction of the money involved. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, you know, you got... There's, there's agents, there's events and races and meets, and, like, there's athletes who kind of specialize in different stuff um and me i'm like a road runner like i i will also do track stuff but you know and i i have a contract um and that's kind of you just get paid to run and do well at big races um usually a lot of races like big city marathons as well as um even other races um there's like a u.s road racing championship series um and you know you get paid to you get prize money for doing well from the race you get you get bonuses there's a lot of bonuses built into runners contracts, um, you know, for doing well at those types of races. Um, and as well as bonuses for running fast times. I mean, if you hit certain time bonuses, you, 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 get, you just get, get paid. Um, so it's, it's a, you know, it's a very unique world in that sense, but, um, so that's kind of where I've been for a long time, you know, started in high school, got pretty good, ran in college, um, got better and was fortunate enough to just kind of be, continue it all uh, through the last few years and just getting better and better, just working hard, doing a lot of early morning runs. And um, this kind of, the, the, this marathon project race kind of came out of, you know, out of the blue per se with everything had been shut down for so long. And this was kind of like a small elite only race. Um, so as soon as it like cropped up, I, I signed right up because it kind of worked out with my schedule and um, you know, it's kind of like a silver lining to a pretty shitty year, mm. you know, <laughs> pretty shitty now that was in, that was in Georgia. It was my research it was right? In Chandler, Arizona. Oh, Arizona. So my research was wrong. I apologize. Totally wrong. Yep. Google. Google. The only- nothing you, new there. Did you Google it or like you know nothing on the internet that's false? So. No, it's like I said, I was like, well, I was running a lot of errands today, but I put on the other podcast to kind yeah. of like get a, a background, you know, to catch yeah, gotcha. up. But. Just to, too- just to paint a picture for the viewers too, your marathon time was better than my half marathon time. Which is doubled, so so just, just that's a little context. <laughs> yeah, two two oh eight fifty nine, so two yes. hours eight minutes. Um, it was four four fifty five per mile. Dude, I didn't, good lord! I never even oh my, that I, I hurt starting. just hearing that. <laughs> I think my best mile when I was in track was five oh five or five fifteen. I forget which one it was, but <laughs> I just love all of your PRs. Cause I know you've done a sub four mile, right? As your best too. I have done a sub four mile, three fifty nine. You know that's something people know about. Yes. Oh yes. my god. All your accolades. Whenever I see that, I'm just like, the amount of speed that you have to have to do that is just utterly incredible. <laughs> I. Um. Also, too, I want to just say that I know on the other podcast you kind of, which like, I guess warmed my heart is you mentioned how, like you know being around us really like kind of motivated you and like you know kind of like in a sense where we were mentors and i think right. the opposite was also right you know we were like always marveling at you too and um you don't really think of it when you're in that time because of, you know you're young kids you're just enjoying like being on a team together um but like you don't really think like hey like we're kind of like a mentor to this younger kid but I mean, it just—it was just kind of cool to hear that, and then just also think of the opposite of how, you know, we were just always so amazed by what, like what you what you were doing. And um, I told Steve like kind of with the turkey trot, which we'd have like an annual 
run every year. Um, when we got after that, we would always have like an annual football game too. And every time you got the ball, everyone was basically like, don't tackle him. Like he's the future. Don't do anything to like jeopardize it. And I think it's kind of funny to like put that into perspective that when like somebody like, you know, keeps going at this sport or, or something that they love, you know, great things can happen. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's pretty interesting to hear as well, because like, I never really realized that so much, you know, like I just think whatever's happened is happening, but mm-hmm. it, it's kind of cool to hear, you know, it from, from your perspective as well. Yeah. And then abs- I mean, just like an, as an athlete, I feel like we, like we want athletes to do a certain or maybe possibly be a certain way, but we don't like sometimes take into account like the sacrifices that have to be made. So I know like, you know, certain athletes like, like LeBron James might have it like structured in his contract. Like you can't play football or you can't do this. So there's definitely sacrifices that you might not know because of like the risk of injury. And um, we just kind of, we were like wondering, like, do you kind of think about that? Or is it just like the love for running that kind of propels you? Yeah. Oh, that's definitely something that gets like joked about and talked about like over, over the years in college, it's like we would finish a season and our coach would be like, all right, don't, don't go play, don't play basketball. Come back with a broken ankle. I'll, mm-hmm. I'll also kill you. Yeah. Like, like, you know, it, it's something that wasn't, and it's actually not, that's not written into like anyone's contracts that, that I know of, but okay. um, it's more of just like, you just don't do it because you care enough. You care too much about the running, you know? Um, right. So, but I mean, yeah, for sure. I mean, I couldn't pick up a basketball for, or kick a soccer ball for the life of me at this point. Um, it's actually, I've actually come to the conclusion that I've been running for so long. It's made me more unathletic. Like I'm so terrible at any other like, physical activity and it's so like inefficient. Like I hate hopping on a bike. Like I'm super sore if I go and like shoot basket, like shoot like free throws for 10 minutes. Like it's, it's, mm-hmm. it's pretty, it's pretty sad. Yeah, it's different muscle groups, you know, using in in the right. different sports. And you used to you used to play soccer, so I mean, I'm sure from time to time you'd like to do a certain thing, you know. But it's cool to to hear that, yeah, and, and understand that. Well, that right. that's right. that makes me like I want to ask you like, what is your training like? Because like you just said, like so you just said if you you know hopping on a bike, shooting basketballs, all that other kind of stuff. But at the same time, like you run super incredibly far incredibly fast so like what is like your training kind of like to get to that um shape you know what i mean like well i think it's important to remember the contact it's like i've literally been running since eighth grade and i'm 28 now so i've I've been running for a long time and it's Mm. just like slowly increase the you know how fast i run on a regular day and how many miles a week i run and things like that and it fluctuates depending on where where you are in like a training segment per se but um yeah. I mean, I just, you want to get good at running, you just run a shit ton. Um, that's that, that's it. So like, you know, for example, when I'm training for a marathon, I'll start building up from, you know, 50, 60 miles a week and pretty quickly get over a hundred, um, and then spend probably eight or nine weeks around a hundred, 115 miles a week, or I'm yeah, like 110 to 115. Um, and there, that's a lot of like longer, 10 to 15 mile runs in the morning, whether it's a workout day or not. And then usually like a second run, like five miles in the afternoon. And that, that that's kind of how like most days look. That is insane. <laughs> you, you, you are incredible. I'm just going to tell you that right there. Yeah. It's insane. I like for say. someone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Those used to be my long, no, long I mean, runs, the 10 mile. And you're like, just let me do it every day. Let me bang that out after work. Yeah. Yeah. No, always. I'm like a huge, you got to do the harder part of your day. First thing, like right mm-hmm. when you wake up, there's that's, nothing like, yeah. I believe there's, you. there's a, there's very good truth in that because anytime you just start to tell yourself like, nah, I don't want to do that anymore. You know, as the day goes on or you just make up excuses. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. And I think just to get it out of the way, I feel like it also, like when I used to run every day in the morning, I just felt better the rest of the day. Um, I know like now Wait, when I'm not, a- yeah, it really just sets the tone for the rest of the day. It really does. Well, mm-hmm. what's funny is I've heard you talk about like, um, 
I forget exactly how you phrased it, but you're like you said like there's enough hours in the day to do the things if you want to do them. Kind of like you know you just have to prioritize. I heard you say to the one podcast like, "Hey, if there's things you want to do, there's plenty of time at four in the morning. There's not many people that are going to be stopping you from doing what you want to do at that time." And um, I know like you get up super early before your wife, before your kids, and you get your run done and you get it in. And you're not the first person that I've heard like use like that kind of like a lot of successful people do that. And just off the top of my head, like I know like if he needs it, like Mark Wahlberg will get up whatever time he needs to get up to get what he needs done. Uh, the guy Jocko, I forget his last name. He's a big proponent of that. Uh, the YouTuber Casey Knight, I don't know how to say his name either, but he's another one like gets up early before everybody does it. And I know you preach that too. Like how did, like, is that just something that like naturally cooked with you? Like, well, I mean, at nighttime, like, you know, you have two kids, so I'm, I'm assuming like, you spend family time, you have to put the kids, you know, they're doing whatever you got to do. You got to put them to bed. Then maybe quality time with your wife or, you know, set up for the next day. So at the end of the day, mm-hmm. it's like, all right, I got to wrap all this up. But in, at that, that nugget of window, that window there, like I could get my runs in, I could do what I got to do. Like, is that something that you just naturally were like, that's what I'm going to do it? Ah, yes and no. Like, it's more like I've been running for so long that, you know, there was always like a practice time, right? In high school, there's practice time. That was always in the afternoon. In college, we mainly, we had afternoon practices. So like, it wasn't until after college and I started just like being busy with other stuff, whether first it was school and then, you know, got married to my wife, had a couple kids. And then like, it kind of transformed into like running is always something I was going to do no matter what. Um, so like, when does it fit in best where it like least affects everyone else around me? Mm-hmm. Um, Cause like contrary to what you or people might think, like I do, I'm not like a, a morning person. Like, <laughs> I don't jump out of bed at 4am saying, hell yeah, let's start the day. Like, no, I, like, I hate my life just as much as everybody else. For, <laughs> you know, I think I, I just get through it. A couple minutes. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think, and then that's, so that's just like where kind of like you were saying that I, which I've also said, it's like, that's just, I care about it enough. And that was the only block of time where I could make it work. So mm-hmm. that makes you feel a little bit better though, to know that you're not getting up, whistling show tunes, you know, smiling ear to ear, like you're a normal, like there's a normal, like, yeah. uh, there, you know what I mean? Oh. Like, but the yeah. discipline is there, like, all right, let's get this done, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Is that actually what time you wake up at, at four? No, no. Okay. I usually don't do four. It's very rare that I get to get up before five. So it's usually like somewhere between five or six. Mostly. Okay. Which isn't like absurdly early, which is something I also like to say. Like, it's not like I've heard of people who get up at 430 every day and like do stuff. So it's I'm not like a Superman by by, by any means. Yeah, there was a there was a moment of time when probably like three, four months when I was working waking up at like four thirty to go to work. And that was just it's just brutal. And then working outside in the conditions, like you definitely like start to hate it. Um Yeah. But that that's that's really cool to to hear and like Steve said, um you how did you fit like medical school in between like was it like right after the run you kinda have to get ready for school or was it like you had a little bit of time yeah i mean it's no like how i always do it is like you know every as a medical student especially in your third and fourth years you're just like every month you're on a different rotation doing like you know pediatrics and then doing ob guy and then doing like radiology and so you're, you're and then each time you just get a you have a brand new schedule with like a different team and like different times when you have to show up every day you get out at different times so there's a lot of like it just just that schedule changes all all the time but for the most part like I just know what time I have to be in whether for that month or for that day of that week and I'll usually just work backwards so if it's like a day when I don't have to be in until nine which are rare mm-hmm. then I'm not getting up at five I'm getting yeah. up at like 6 30 right um right. versus days sometimes it was like I had to be ready to go at 8 a.m then yeah, I got to get up early. So gosh, I don't even know what the original question was, but I don't even know either. That's, like, that's the problem <laughs> with getting older. Um, no, that was perfect though. Cause that, that kind of like, I'm not <laughs> obviously in the medical field, so I don't know like what, um, 
like rotations are and stuff like that but it's cool to not cool but it, it's it's interesting to see that like you know you might not have the same set, set schedule like as as like when i went to college you know i'm i'm in this class every day for the whole semester you know n- monday nights at, from nine to, to 12 or whatever what obviously not that but i think i actually think i did have a nine o'clock class and i was like finishing at 11 but uh yeah it, it's i mean it's interesting because like that you're also being shuffled around so from week to week or day to day or month to month, you know, you kind of have to just kind of go with the flow or whatever you're put into. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's a very common thread through like most of med, like a student's training, even into residency, like mm-hmm. you should, you're constantly just doing rotations and you got to learn different things related, even as, as, as a resident, when you're like going into your more specialized training, there's even, divisions of that that you need to learn and do specific rotations on so it's like yeah it's it's not until you finally finish and you're you're like an attending physician you know however many years down the road that you finally kind of have a pretty set like this is what i'm doing every week right and it's not going to (laughs) change so with with the schedule being changing with your you know being full-time med student and then you're like we said, you're hap- you're married and father of two. There's, so there's a home life there, and there's got to be a balance there. And then, mm-hmm. as we previously touched on, the the practice and the training for running is there. There, so somewhere in there, is there like a, a a deal of sacrifice that you have to deal with, like that you you things that you have to say no to that other people can have the opportunity to do. You know what I mean, like that because you like I know I have to manage my time and my resources. And these are the things that I care about the most. So, like, yeah. if I say to you, "Hey, listen, we're going to get the we're going out to get drinks at you know ten o'clock, and we're going to go bowling," like, at other times you have to be like, "Hey, listen, I'm sorry, I can't. You know, I I'm in a set regimented thing that I'm training. You know, doing." Yes and no, and but mostly no because I don't know. I've been living like like a 50 year old man for like since early college, like in the sense of like, and my wife is exactly the same as me. And then she's also a Washingtonville girl. Yes. Shout um, out Monica. And, and yep. Shout out. Um, but like we, I don't know, like going out and doing things late at night has like never been something that like I've ever done. It's not something we do. So like it, so that would be the main sacrifice it's like no i'm not i can't do things after like you know eight o'clock and even seven o'clock i don't even want to go outside like i already got what time is it now it's 4 30 i got my pajama pants on like you know what i mean i'm done for the day. Uh, <laughs> i mean <laughs> but like, that, like that's how i love to live that's how my wife loves to live and we're i mean we have we have plenty of friends and we, i mean we're very close with our families we see them all all the time but um you know I would say, so there's really not many like social sacrifices, I would say. Um, I still feel like we get in like the time we want to get in with the people we want to get it in with. Um, it's just, we've never been like super outgoing and that's in some of the more traditional sense that I feel like you're, you were getting at. Um, right, right. And what also, um, I would say the main sacrifice is just like, kind of like we were saying, like it does suck getting up early and like kind of mm-hmm. pushing through things that aren't super fun but um and i would say also there's definitely some family time sacrifice and which which makes it a little harder for my wife and which Mm -hmm. is why it's definitely like a two-way street and like a it's like really like you know she's just as important to what i do as 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 myself um because you know there's going to be times when i got to go run and she's got to go you know that's going to mean she's in charge of both kids for however long i'm gone for and you know um things like that um so I would say that's that's where some of like the sacrifice comes, but I feel like we have kind of figured out a good balance, and it's like something we're used to at this point. And I make it up on the back end. I cook dinner almost every night, so I feel no, like okay, that, right. that gets me a few grand. Hey, listen, <laughs> behind every great man is a great woman. So shout out your wife. Yes. All right. Shout out both of you. Monica was always like you guys both actually were like two of the sweetest kids growing up like you guys were so always so nice so very like cool. straight edge little yeah, kid yeah i mean it is what it is like we, we need the the differences we need people who are humble and nice and you know the that like heartwarming just just being like good people you know um yeah. so shout out you both and it, it's cool to see like the um 
I guess in a I don't know. I don't know if it's a digital world, but just like you, you see like the makeups, breakups, you know, celebrity, whatever, just people not like being able to make it work with relationships. It's nice to see like like both you and Steve have the relationship that's been working. Obviously, there's going to be the the good and bad at, that every relationship has, but it's nice to see um, that form of love, you know, so that's just I just want to shout right. you guys out for that. That's right. That's right. Now. <laughs> <laughs> so being as a professional runner and, um, you know, obviously you're pretty damn good at it, to say the least. Do you ever like if you're out and like uh, like running or see other people out for a run and like never to knock someone on the beginning of like their their fitness journey when people want like they're out of shape, but they're trying to get into shape. You know, you never knock someone for trying to start it because, you know, I do it every week and a half, you know, I, I, I so, but do you ever like see someone who's running and like, they maybe like they're wearing like the wrong pair of shoes in the back of your head. You're like, oof, bud, feet gonna hurt. Bad idea, bud. Bad idea. Like I saw a guy, he started getting running, but he was running in Converse's and I'm like, what? Oh, hold on a minute. Why are you doing that? Yeah. Yeah. You definitely see, you definitely see your fair share of that and you just gotta let it go. Like. I, I'm you see a lot of people running in like dress shirts like usually like short sleeve like button up shirts right like mm. hey that's just like why would you get that all nasty and sweaty that's just just not designed for that it's yeah the collar rubbing on your neck um that actually blows my mind the most um oh, I I'm pretty sure this is what it was I feel like I should remember it because it was so outlandish but I'm pretty sure I saw a person running in a full Canadian tuxedo, like a, a few months. <laughs> like denim jacket, jeans. I can't remember the shoe choice. I think the shoe choice were like some sneakery, athletic-ish type of shoes. But like, I was just confused. I'm just like, denim? What, was, Come was, on. Was like, there somebody behind him like filming for like a skit or something? <laughs> no, nothing like that? No. <laughs> that just seems like it solo, would hurt. Solo, solo, solo. <laughs> that's yeah yeah but i mean you know people it, I, mean, I guess i take it for granted right like i'm i've been running for so long i know you know the ins and outs of like what feels comfortable what you should run in but there's people who haven't like kind of like you said who haven't exercised a day in their life and they're like just had a an epiphany like you know let, let's time to change my life you know january 1st 2021 new year's yeah. resolution yeah people, oh i don't have running shoes so let me just put on my like my Crocs and take them for a spin. Like, you know, you, you can't hold it against them. Right. Exactly. Like I'm never to knock the person, but there's like, and it's the same thing too. Like when I was getting into like weightlifting and stuff, you'd see people at the gym and like, they are just like swinging with the weights and using all their back instead of the legs. And I'm like, Oh man, you are really going to hurt yourself if you keep doing that. <laughs> like I, I commend you for being here and putting in the time and the effort, but like that is not the way to do it. So I, I just, uh, I, you know, I, I would say it also goes the other way though, because I can def, I mean, I get made fun of at least once. I mean, now not so much anymore, even though I live in a city now where I run by a lot more people. Um, I guess people don't care. I guess there's enough crazy people in like a city where people just, just Philly's pretty nice. but like, you know, like people who get made fun of for taking their like thing too seriously. Right. Mm. So like I'm the guy running in short shorts Mm. every day in the summer and I got my my tights on in the winter so it's like you know people definitely I'm sure look at me and snicker behind my back like look at this hardo mm -hmm. <laughs> this guy's going so, so there, there's a there's a difference though with with you because it's like you're not just doing it to look the look like you also you you walk you run the run if I you know can use the analogy correctly I feel here, like in, in that moment right. of but judgment people though know. people might know that yeah, exactly yeah, exactly <laughs> yeah, oh man yeah. that is true though that is true it's actually funny too because like my mom was always be like oh i don't get how you people run like i can see the pain in your face and it's always like that's just something that sticks with me because it's like you like if you've ran before you know you know that feeling like just yeah. trying to push through um there's a term that you called it on, on i've heard i heard you use it on the other podcast the uh the um pain face yeah, there's but there's also like you said you go like to the hurt, the the pain locker or the oh, the, or the, hurt locker. the hurt locker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's a, a place many of us know. 
And I, I think that's the difference between somebody who's doing it for like the love and knowing like they're good. Because when I would always get to that that point, I would be like, nah, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> like I think in um, – there was one yeah, race I mean, where we know. were literally um, – what do you call it? Uh, I think all the, most of the varsity people weren't running. So it was just a JV team. And I went out like usually I, I start slow and then I pace myself and move up and start passing people. But for this reason, I, I don't know why, but I went out mad fast and like I was in first for like four or five minutes after that. And I was like, what, what am I doing? And then I just like died. And then like there was this one hill and I was trying to sprint up it at the end of the race and I just fucking ate it. <laughs> and it was just crap. Jimber. It was like the only moment I've ever experienced first for, for like three minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, you know what's funny is you see that. I've seen professional runners do the same thing. You really only are going to see it in like a marathon. Mm-hmm. Because it's pretty I, w- I wanted to ask you, like, do you see guys like just blow their load in the beginning of the race? And just <laughs> you're like, yep, that's, you're, you're, you know, th- that might be a bad idea. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty rare. Like in most of the races I run, um, like, you know, you see it in high school and even in college, you see it all, all, all the time. And you know, mm-hmm. like that guy's not making it to the finish line at mm-hmm. a quarter of the speed. <laughs> mm-hmm. He's going now, but yeah, I mean, you don't really see that too much. It's normally people just kind of slowly like die is what we call it. They just die during the race and they just mm-hmm. slow down a lot, but you see it really bad in the marathon because the marathon, mm-hmm. like you physically run out of energy if you didn't like hydrate and suck down your calories good during during the race so like you see people go from like full steam ahead to just to walking like professional athletes just walking it in because like they just didn't do a good job which is pretty hilarious let me let me ask you um i've only had one experience of running a half marathon so is it like how does that work with the like that you have water or like stations of um stuff where you get like you said like snack not obviously not snacks but just like stuff to fuel you for running yeah yeah so so in like professional marathons um how it works is usually that it's all set up ahead of time but like there's the professional athletes there's going to be a set number of fluid stations throughout Mm -hmm. the race usually it's every every 5k or every four miles um so the night before everyone can, you know, you buy your own bottles, whatever you want, you put whatever you want in it for, you know, it's usually some sort of electrolyte, like, you know, I used a Gatorade mix, um, just with like higher electrolytes in it. Um, and you, you submit those ahead of time. Um, and on some bottles you can take, you know, you, I mean, I, I tape gels so that they're just like quite literally, it tastes like a liquid fruit snack. It's kind of gross, super sweet. Um, and usually there's like a hundred calories in it and then you just suck it down. Um, and you know, I'll tape those to a few bottles. Um, and then throughout the race, you know, they have those bottles, they kind of tell you ahead of time, what number table it's on, what position on the table, and you got to swipe it off as, as you run by. Um, so, you know, it's, it's nice. It's a huge kind of bonus for like us to be able to like be comfortable, get, have our own fluid stations and, you know, kind of set everything up how we want. Um, but that, yeah, that's kind of how it is. Cause like a marathon is, it's just as much a, like in an eating and drinking competition as it is a running one. Like, cause if you don't do that stuff, well, you're going to crash and burn by, you know, the last few miles. So, Oh, so Oh, let me tell you. Yeah. I, I think that's the, the funny thing. Cause when I ran my half marathon and I probably should have not probably, I definitely should have trained a lot more because I went into it thinking like Frisbee shape was running shape. Um, mm-hmm. so that's another thing, but, um, so- Literally, like it seemed. I don't know. Th- this one was in Queens. It was like over by the where the the globe is, and every I don't know if they had it where it was like every mile was a fluid station, but those last like eight miles, every mile seemed a lot longer. And I was just like, all right, it's gonna be around this corner, and then it's not. And I was like, all right, it's gonna be around this corner. It wasn't. And then I feel like the last like four or five miles, like everything was cramping up towards the end. So I definitely know that feeling. And then. Like trying to push through it. That was probably the most pain of my life. Like the the finish, as soon as I finished and started walking, going from the run to stopping, like everything in my legs just seized. And it was like trying to walk (laughs) on like, like Frankenstein. Like that's probably what I looked like. 
<laughs> yep. Yep. I, after my first marathon, I was, I was nauseous for like mm -hmm. a couple hours. And like, it was a, the weirdest feeling where I was so sick because I could just feel, I can almost feel like how pissed off my muscles and body were at what mm -hmm. I just did to it. Like I could like feel the pain from the inside of my muscles that I just like tore to shreds to get to that finish line. And yeah, it was a terrible, it was the worst feeling in the entire world. So how do you go from that to like being like, let me run more? Well, I mean, well, <laughs> it, was, it was my first one. I kind of like intentionally undertrained a little bit because I okay. just didn't get like a, a, a qualifying time. Um, so it was more about getting to the start line, like healthy, feeling good. Um, but so, yeah, I mean, it sucks. And then the next day, I mean, well, I mean, you feel pretty crappy for a few days after a marathon for sure. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, dude, I don't know. I'm just a running junkie, dude. Just like nice. said, everyone's got their poisonous choice. So, you yeah. know, it didn't take much for me to want to start running again. No, he's there and he's I, like, well, I didn't die. Yeah. So we can go a little farther. <laughs> yeah, I, I appreciate that mentality because I know from when I did, I was like, yeah, I never want to do this again. Right. Um, but then there's like days when um, I used to play Frisbee. And when I transferred from uh, Hofstra to St. John's, our team would show up for practice but when we would have like game like tournaments, like only like seven of us would show up, which is the amount of people you need to play. And that's con technically considered playing savage is what they called it. So mm -hmm. um, you're going three or four games with no subs. And by the end of that, you're cramping up to and dying and you'd have like another day. And cause it would be like a two day tournament. And then by like day two, we were like, yeah, we can't play anymore because everybody's broken. Um, <laughs> but, but like, I used to love to play that. So for me, like I know that mentality where I was just like, all right, let's go back to it. Basically go back to the drawing board and try to do it again. So if it's something you love, I can, I can get that, you know, you're going right. to put the work in. Right. Exactly. That's very well put. Very well put. If if you want, if you like it enough, it's, you're going to do it no matter what. Like, yeah. This absolutely. may be a stupid question and I apologize if it is, but do you wear headphones when you run? I'm like, I'm assuming with the marathon, no, that way you can be aware of your surroundings and you're with other people. But like when you go for your runs, do you wear headphones? Like in, in races, like you never run with like anything like that. Um, right. but that, no, it, that's not a bad question. I actually get that a lot. Like I, I, I never really used to only on treadmills is where I when, when I like put on like a pair of like Bluetooth head, um, headphones and like listen to podcasts and listen to music and stuff. Cause like, you know, I mean, I don't mind the treadmill, but I don't let, you know, no, I don't think anyone really loves running on treadmill. Like, <laughs> right. Right. Um, well, actually like since like COVID hit and like, I, I don't run with anyone anymore. Um, it's, I, I have actually definitely run and listened to like music and I mean, I usually listen to podcasts more so than on music. Hmm. Um, just so, like, you know, it's just, I mean, it was almost like I thought of it as like treating myself because like I've run so many miles, just like, I don't mind running without anything. I, I actually like it most of the time, but sometimes it's, you know, it's nice. It's like getting a little, you know, getting a little extra when you get to go and just like have something, have something get you through the run. So the, the answer is yes, occasionally. That's actually, because uh, I've, I've talked with people and I've met two people at ends of the spectrum where like a friend of mine, he was like, uh. I was like, oh, yeah, I like to listen to headphones. I'm the same as you. Like, sometimes it's music, sometimes it's podcasts, just something to help me, like, free the mind. But, like, I always, like, I need headphones. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's who I am. And I was talking with him, and he's like, nah, nah, man, I like running with no headphones. And I'm like, really? He's like, yeah, it's just me and my thoughts on the road. That's it. He's like, I love it. It's like my therapy, you know? And then there's other people like, nope, nope, I need, like, high-intensity music. It gets me going, you know? Mm -hmm. I got to I gotta get my heart, get my mentally pumped up. So I, I find it interesting where – you know, where, where people lie in their mentally yeah. to get them I think, pushed. And you know, what's funny is I think it correlates pretty well with how much you actually like running. Oh yeah. I hate like it. People that who makes don't sense. really like running, much, they rely more on like needing like the, the EDM music bumping to like, get them through versus, you know, just the crazy old marathoner dude down the road. Like he'll go and run endless miles with it. Mm -hmm. So I'm definitely way further on that end of the uh, spe spectrum. But you made me think of a pet peeve of mine, which is when you see like couples or like two people running together, both with headphones in, like doing a run together. It's like, I don't know. I just feel like if you're going to run with someone, that's the whole point. You get to like chat and chill and 
enjoyed like you know it's like just hangout time but i don't know it's weird i feel like when people run together and they're just straight up ignoring one another i agree with that me and my wife were trying to uh we get on this kick like every spring into fall and we try to go on jogs together we don't run i won't i won't say that word we jog okay it's a <laughs> light light j and uh <laughs> But that's what we do. We talk and we chat and sometimes it's like a good vent session where we're out, we're burning energy and you get stuff off your chest, you know, and, you know, I, I, I had the same thought, actually. I never understood people that are just running together and not engaging with each other, you know? No, see, I like to I like to also be that way, too, so that I can kind of, you know, put that that notion in the other person's head of maybe we should walk soon. <laughs> <laughs> Running out of steam here. I, I incept that seed in there. Yep. Yep. <laughs> no, but uh, I, I thought I thought that's actually interesting because I never actually thought about listening to a podcast when I was running. Like I'll, I'll do it when I'm driving. I'll listen to mostly music, but I, l- lately, as it's kind of podcasts have become more prevalent, um, I like to listen to them on like longer drives. But that I think I'd actually like to listen to podcasts if I if I was a run. Yeah. It's yeah. it's, it, and what I found is like certain things, like even comedy, um, it's like a, a an easier way to trick your mind into like the time, whereas like as songs play, you know, like maybe like a song's like normally like three to five minutes, so you can kind of like gauge how far you've gone, whereas yeah. like there's no set time in like a comedy special or like a podcast, and it can kind of like you're just like oh wow I just ran an hour and I didn't even like realize it. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Absolutely right. I, I find myself counting songs sometimes, like yeah. if I'm on a treadmill mm-hmm. and I'm like trying to like cover up the time run and it's like I know I know exactly how like <laughs> exactly. Um so yeah. I it's a good way to lose that. track of time for the mm-hmm. other the other ways. Mm-hmm. So being as you're a um the a future you know uh not a future you're in medical school you're a future doctor correct is that what you're yep i'll graduate um, in- sweet just well props there. to you because again that is badass that is a thing very few people are able to do um so yeah. there's this this thing you know that's kind of trending in uh the world if you would um it's called COVID 19 mm-hmm. how do you feel about that vaccine I've heard about that. How do you feel about the vaccine? Yeah. Is that was that the question? Yes, sir. No, I think I cut you off there. Um, my response is every single like ninety nine percent of people have taken dozens of vaccines in their life, and I'm um, I just don't understand why there's so much um, like unrest and concern about another vaccine that. Um, like we've made dozens of vaccines. Like, I, like even though the the process was obviously like hurried along, um, it's not like everything was done from scratch. Like, like we know how to make vaccines. Um, so yeah, so I got no problem with with the uh, vaccine. I'm very excited. I think the, our the students were, you know, we we I haven't gotten one yet, but I know we will be soon, and they've already started like at our institution. And you kind of see, like you guys have seen, like everyone I and mean, people. I feel like it's like a thing you got to post if you got the vaccine. You got to post. Yeah, something. yeah, yeah. It's yeah. just a social media <laughs> year. Um, but yeah, I mean, when it was all said and done, like it's not like this vaccine this vaccine it's like this even the the mrna vaccine is something people talk about like oh this is new it's like it's it's not new it's it's like mrna vaccines and such have been studied for for 60 plus years um it's it's you know so people are worried um but there's really nothing to be worried about like you know i'm 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 kind of jealous my my sisters are nurses they already got vaccinated i think um i think my mom's getting one soon and yeah, just like lots of people around me are kind of signing up. Well, I heard in another podcast, your whole like, basically your whole family is just like frontline workers, right? You come from a line of, you said like, it was nurses, right? There's yeah. a lot of nurses in your family? Yeah. Yep. Everyone. Pretty much. Well, all, shout out your family things. then, because yeah, that's noble. That's awesome. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. The hers are definitely doing big things. I, I Actually, two things I've seen on TikTok, which are like really funny to me, were like, people who'd be like, Becky, I saw you like drink jungle juice out of a basement frat party 
with more like cocaine and all this stuff in it and you're not going to take a, a vaccine like I, I the shit i've seen you do and and you're worried about this which is like by scientists and doctors and stuff like come on and then the other thing i've seen um was what fuck what was it shit that might that that one might be out of my brain now there was another funny like a or like a um basically talk, like pal. Yeah, right. <laughs> this is what happens when <laughs> when you don't have a brain. Um but there there was another there was another thing. If it randomly pops in my head, I'll 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 just blurt it out. Well, yeah. Martin, it's funny you say that the yeah. the whole like uh you reason why people are in like like oh my god, this and that blah blah blah. I think there's a lot of like one there's become a lot of distrust in mainstream media, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then two, now there's all this unchecked social media for the most part. People can literally just go out and say I got the vaccine and I grew a third nut, you know, like they can just make anything they want up. And, um, you know, there was a video that got, I think Chris was in our, our a group text this morning and it's like, oh, this is the plot of I am legend. Oh, you yeah. know, it's the same year. It's the same thing. This will happen. And my wife, like, she's like, just for shits and giggles. I Googled this. She's like, I Googled the plot and she's like, none of that's right. This guy's just being an asshole, you right. know? Yeah. And it's just people just take like anything and be like, Yep, I'm I'm running with this. I'm 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 gonna run to the hills and say, you know, don't get it. It's it's a plot. It's this and that, you know. Yeah, yeah. There's zero fact checking that happens like mm. online. So like, like everyone just accepts anything they read. Any headline is like fact until proven otherwise, which is totally the wrong. Which and which is what people exploit, right? That's exactly like what mm-hmm. the the reason all the issues that there are. Yeah, I've I've literally we've ranted about this on a previous episode where I basically was like, if you do any amount of research, like you can look at like three Google articles and realize that like what you're just saying is bullshit. So, I mean, right. it's hard that like we have to. It's basically what we used to learn, like the fucking MLA sourcing. Like we had to prove that <laughs> you know we didn't pull this out of thin air. But I don't know, maybe people just forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. I don't think Twitter allows enough characters for that. Yeah, that that's very true. <laughs> that's, very, that's very true. Um, yes, yeah, so it's pretty frustrating that pretty pretty frustrating that like yeah, there's just so much misinformation that gets spread and just goes like you said unchecked and you know that's where we are. So you're you're studying to be an anesthesiologist. Is that is that correct? Technically, okay. I when you start a residency program, so your first four years of medical school, you technically aren't studying to be any like specialist yet. Okay, um, it's kind of like your general four years. You learn to become a like a doctor, right? And then in your fourth year, which are, which are, where I'm at now, you apply to residency programs, and a residency program will be you apply to programs that are specific to what you want to go into. Mm-hmm. Um, so whether that's internal medicine or Um, which is kind of the path for like cardiologists or pulmonologists. Um, Or like for me, I want to apply, I applied to anesthesia programs. Um, And then, you know, so-and-so for for every specialty. Um, And then, then you go in in, into a residency program. So you are technically a doctor at that point. You, and you, you know, you treat patients as such, but you, it's still like super, it's a very hard kind of time in your medical training. You work like 60 to 80 hours a week. Um, but you, yeah, you learn, you know, you kind of go through and learn your specialty. Um, and by the end of it, and each kind of program has a different length for how long it is. So anesthesia is four years. Um, internal medicine is three years, uh, general surgery is five years. Um, so, you know, everyone kind of signs up for whatever they're kind of going to hunker down and do. And um, yeah. And so I will find out in March, like what, where I'm going to be for my anesthesia training, but I haven't technically started it yet. I uh, gotcha. That makes sense. What, what like drove you to that, like part, like section of the, of the field, if you may. Right. Yeah, this is a great question. Why anesthesia? This is literally, I feel like I've answered this question on like all 15 of my um, my um, interviews that, that I've done. In, in of the course, last yeah. Um, oh, I've got this answer down pat. Perfect. Um, no, so pretty much it's, 
I, you know, you rotate as a student, you go through all of the different specialties, right? For the, for the most part, um, you, you hit a majority of them. And I like them all. Like, like medicine's cool. That's why I wanted to be a doctor. I think it's all pretty fun. Um, but ultimately, anesthesia was like a perfect combination of, of a lot of things. They have like a really, a pretty solid like work-life balance. Like, you know, you kind of hear some specialties, like even after you're an attending physician, like you still kind of work yourself into the ground for a minute, <laughs> forever. Um, so I definitely didn't want to go that route, you know, being more of like the fit, the family man that I am. Yes. Um, and anesthesia is really cool. Cause you like, you are, you are in the, um, the operating room, which is kind of like a place I wanted to be. I really, you know, that's kind of like the, the prototypical like doctorly spot. Right. Um, and it's just like, it's such, it's such a chill environment, like anesthesiologists, like all the doctors and residents that I've like interacted with and, and worked with, like kind of the culture of it is very, a lot more laid back and kind of fits very well with my personality um, and who I am. And then the medicine's really cool. So like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm just like most of us, like, I like that instant gratification, right? Like, you know, we all want, like when we want something, we, 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 we want it now. And like anesthesia fits that bill very well. Like I'm the guy, like I draw up my own drugs and everything I give happens like instantly, you know, propofol is going to knock you out and put you to sleep. I'm going to give you all these like blood pressure meds and all these pain meds, and it's all going to work like instantly. So it's really cool that like you're in the driver's seat doing and everything you do you're doing yourself and it's happening like in real time you know it's not like um like a general practitioner is going to prescribe like a blood pressure medicine to someone who comes in with high blood pressure and then they, you know you follow them for three or six months see how they're doing maybe adjust it and then bring them back in another three or six months you know it's that's a very long-winded thing to you know have your effect it's a very important job um but um you know i'm kind of went the other route and i really like everything an anesthesiologist does. Oh, that's, that's cool. Yeah. I mean, not every job is for everyone. So it's not, it's not like a knock on, I know there's like in photography or videography, there's a lot of different niches and I'm somebody who kind of like wants to do it all in a sense, or will like take any, anything, you know? So, um, I just kind of like, yeah, it's, it's, I wanted to see like your, how that thought process went. Um, but, uh, right. Yeah, <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was my rationale. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm, I, but what's funny is like, I'm still of that mindset as, as well. Like in, in, in any specialty, there's some specialties. You do a fellowship would be like the next level of, of training um, to be even more specialized. But like, I, I don't really think I want to do that. Like I want to be like the general anesthesiologist who kind of does all the different types of patients and does all the different, you know, things within our umbrella. But yeah, it's, you know, that's how the world is, right? Everyone kind of finds their little, their spot and sets up shop. Yeah, man. It's a good way to put it. <laughs> so what's going on with the, uh, when do you start competing for the Olympic trials? When oh, yes, start? yes, yes, yes. Well, okay. So they, the Olympic trials, so the marathon Olympic trials happens earlier than the rest of the track and field trials because a marathon, you know, it's, it's, it takes a long time to recover from and then like build back up and train for. Okay. So I actually ran the marathon trials um, this past February. Um, and I ended up, so, and essentially how pretty much all the track and field trials works is top three goes, you know? Um, so I was sixth, you know, I did, I busted my ass. Um, I ran a really great time. Um, so, so that was the race that was in Georgia which is what you probably heard. So that was the okay, race right, that you did. Okay. Do you did 211 in that one? 29? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I ran the, the 211, 29. So it was like a big PR for me, personal record. And like, I ran a pretty good race. Like there wasn't too many things I could have done to, you know, be top three on that day. So I just got beat. So that was kind of, you know, it was a, it was a bittersweet day. Um, and that's, you know, so that, that's was kind of where I ended with that. But now we've got the track and field trials are happening in in June. So real quick, from so, you said February track and right? field trials for me. Oh yeah. Oh, real real quick. Yeah. Sorry. And so from February to this last marathon is when you shave the the two two or so minutes off. Yeah. That's yes, exactly. 
Good shit. <laughs> That's all I can say. Good shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah, yeah. So the, it was a good, you know, that's the track and field one start in June. Yeah, so so the track and field trials are a little different. Like, you know, you gotta get your qualifying time to qualify for the, the trials. Um and then I don't know, it's a little confusing this year, and I'm actually not even a hundred percent how it's gonna work, but there's there's an Olympic standard. So there's like a standard to qualify for the Olympic trials. But then there's also the Olympic standard, which is even faster, which like you kind of technically have to run to, to then run in the Olympics. Um, so, you know, you kind of got to qualify for, for the, the trials first. So that's kind of like my first goal. And then, yeah. And then basically I'll, so you run, I'll run a race in April or May, basically a 10 K is like, I, I'm a speedy guy, but 10 K on the track is as low as I can go. I mean, that's, that, that's the, the longest race on a track, but anything faster than that, like a 5k or a 1500, like those are, those are for the speed demons. And I'm, mm. you know, I'm definitely a distance distance runner. So, um, so yeah, so I will be trying for the 10k. Um, and then, so yeah, okay. I'll, I'll try to qualify. And then that race, you know, kind of happens over a couple weeks at the end of June. All right. Now is this, you may not know this off the top of your head and you know, not, a. Uh... Not that you should, but just for us and just for anyone like who follows you, is there anywhere like is that kind of stuff televised? Like, can anyone like is or? Yeah, um, for the most part, like all all the Olympic sports stuff, I think that's all owned by like um, NBC Sports Network. So okay. for the mo- the Olympic trials, usually finds its way on. I mean, for like the ten k, you know, it's that's a big kind of talking point slash point of contention in track and field is like, how do we market the sport to make more people like, like it and want to watch. Um, so like, you will never find like the whole 29 minute 10 K like beginning to end. Like, but um, yeah, usually it, it, there, it like, it'll be on TV in some. Form. Okay. All right. I'm trying Where to is that one that. being held? Is it? So that one, um, is going to be back. It's very often in, in Eugene, Oregon. Um, okay. It's, yeah, but that that's where it is a lot. They got a really nice setup, very big track history and, and culture there. So, can people get tickets? Oh yeah, you can get tickets, man. Sign All right. up. All right. But then, you know, it's also in, in Oregon, so yeah. But you know, Oregon sounds cool. There's definitely oh, some I mean, cool stuff. A of, yeah. I I'm a photographer, so I've always been meaning to travel more, and just with yeah, like just COVID here. and everything, you know, kind of feel like we lost a year of just like doing stuff. So I'm definitely down to. I mean, to, there's to some, some cool. There's some cool places. I would definitely send you if uh, if if you made your way out. But you know, cross country flight ticket that definitely adds to the uh, ticket price of the race. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, you got that right. Oh man! Yeah. So that that'll kind of be the next goal as far as running goes. Um, yeah. Well, that's dope. We wish you the best of luck on him. We're rooting yeah, for you. Absolutely. I actually want to try to make a note. Thank you. Thank you. It should be out. fun. You know, like, for me, I actually, you know, I'm a guy. I haven't run on the track in a long time. Like I've been like like a road racer, right? I've been a marathoner, and it's you know those are big long build ups and big long recoveries. Um, and so, you know, I haven't run a track race in probably like three years now. So it's going to be pre- pretty cool. To, you know, for me, you know, it's exciting for a guy like me who, you know, you do a lot in running. It's cool to go back and do something that you haven't done in a while. So with like the difference between running on like a track, do you set like a certain point? Because I, when I when I used to run, you know, there'd be like, let's say just at like um, like West Point, like, you know, you'd see a certain section of where everybody used to stand you know and you see everybody like cheering you on is that kind of like do you pick certain points or do you like is it just like tunnel vision like for 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 me when when i'm racing the race or you're saying for spectators no for you yeah as like a runner yeah i mean i don't think too much about any of that like like i i'm I'm, i don't think i'm understanding your question well i think because maybe i didn't like to run that maybe I had to trick my mind into like, you know, it's not that bad kind of thing. Um, I just used to like the team. So that's mainly why I did it. Um, But it's like, I would like, obviously that, that track at West point was a lot smaller 
it's like a 200 i think it was so like when you pass like all of the all of the washington kids from that moment till like we get i I would get back to the washington kids you know i kind of had to like trick my mind into like and then when i'd see them again and everybody's like you know like cheering and stuff then i'm back to like all right cool and then that's your like kind of inspiration to yeah they're like uh no i don't think i need uh i need that i think the track is already like there's are there's usually people all around on the track and i don't know i'm i'm pretty tunnel vision but when I'm okay race, cool so like i'm <laughs> <laughs> i just like to get the the perspective of other, of other people and like how they yeah. oh yeah it's always good to i like to take my myself out of like uh, like the situation and see like what other people think and then like kind of compare and contrast just to get well, different think- worldviews and everything I think like one of the nails that we're trying to hit on the head here is that like running, I think for a lot of people is a mental toughness as well as a physical toughness. And you seem to have that, that mental toughness towards it, you know, like it it takes some type of folk. I I assume like for you, obviously, because like you said, you've been running for 20 years and you, you're a professional to do it. There are times where you, you get up and you, you run where there's other people like they literally have to set their mind like, okay, I have to get up. I have to do this. You know what I mean? Like, but I mean, it speaks volumes about you that you're, you know, you no headphones, tunnel vision, like, well, let's do it. Let's go, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, you actually brought up a really good point there that I feel like I, I've pointed out in the past, which is like, I feel like not, and not even like everyone who runs pretty competitively, like has that mindset. Like, I feel like that's a little bit of an advantage I have. Like, I don't, I have zero like mental energy I need to expend in like saying, all right, let's get out the door like this morning at 5 a.m. Like it's just, it's part of, it's so ingrained in my daily habit that like, boom, it just, ha- you know, I don't have to think about it. Um, and that's like, I, I, that does definitely save some like, some like mental energy and like willpower throughout the day than like other people who really have to like get themselves up to like, you know, get out the door and get the hard work in. So pretty, yeah, that's a very like cool point. That's definitely, yeah, that's, that's a, like you said, it's a step up. I used to, I think about the best year I had was when I was running alongside uh, Vinny. Yep. And I, I know you guys are, are still good friends, which is cool. But like, he literally would push me. And that was like, that was my motivation. You know, we would be neck and neck, like one race, he'd beat me the next race, I'd beat him. And then like, after that year, I kind of like trailed off. And it wasn't as motivating for me because he's like, he started running more, and he got better. And then like, I was like, all right, I don't have that motivation, but it's nice to see that you have <laughs> right, that right. already in your head and you don't need anything extra. Yeah. Yeah. That's dope though. I think it's very, it's interesting. I mean, I know it's to just say like you run, it could sound like to the person like, okay, whatever, like to the audience, but like, there's so much more. I think that like mentally and like I mean said before, like it goes into it and the 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 regimen of like your time management and your dedication to training and you know the the small sacrifices here and there. I'm like, you know, it's 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 a good accomplishment. Like, you know, props to you, bro. Like you know, give people their flowers while you're here. You deserve them. Props yeah, to you. Like absolutely. By all means. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's 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 cool. That's yeah. I well, thank you very much. That's just what I've done. And I'm happy doing it. Um, do you but, do you have any? I mean, besides running and uh, studying, do you have any hobbies that like you go to in your in your free time? You know what? This is like an embarrassing question for me because like I, there's like I run. Um, you know, obviously like school and medicine and stuff, and like and then it's really just hanging out with my girls. Like that's like all we do, and um. And that's fine by me. So yeah, there's not too many hobbies. Like I like, you know, I enjoy things. Like I like coffee. Like I'm not like a, a super crazy, like coffee snob type of person, but uh, you know, I'm slowly working my way up. I got, um, for the, I, I got a Christmas present, a, like, um, a burr coffee grinder, which okay. apparently is like the best kind of coffee grinder for okay. grinding up beans. So I you know, I've always, I'm, I'm still a drip coffee guy, like on, on, on the reg, but you know, now I can go and buy like some nice beans and like, you know, so like random things like that. But, um, I would say no real super intense hobbies that I do. What I will say to that is what I've learned on TikTok is anything can be <laughs> customized as a hobby. Um, right. Oh the, yeah. Like 
I, I, I mean, there's so many different like niches of TikTok too, where you can have like woodworking. There's probably like a coffee bean TikTok that you could just fi- like find somehow. You start liking videos, and then more start popping up in your feed, right. and you're like, "Damn, I didn't know that this was this intense." Like people are telling you what bean to use or like what to to you know brew it in. Right. Um, right. But yeah, I mean, it's it's your family man. So that's I mean that's that's nice to hear. You know, the, yeah. you don't have to have yeah. too many more. I mean, things I, I just that. like like hanging out. Yeah, just like hanging out with family and friends when 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 I can. That's that that's what's fun. Um, How old are you? You have two girls, you said. Yeah, yeah. The, How old are your uh, the girls? Oldest, they are McKenna is two and a half, and then Adeline is just past six months. So she just had her six month checkup. Just got a boatload of shots yesterday. Actually. Oh wow! Oh so oh congrats to you. Yeah. That's a that's a that's a baby baby. That's not a toddler. That's a baby. Oh yeah, yeah. Thank you very Oof. much. You know she a COVID baby. You know COVID baby. Yeah, that's, yeah. More power. You got to you a terrible guys. two, <laughs> and a and a baby. Oh yeah, terrible twos, man. Those are so legit. Terrible. So oh legit. yeah, man. Uh, my nephew went through them and. Uh, then he was a three major and now he's a four NATO. So strap in, man. <laughs> yeah, but it's coming. That's what I've heard from multiple people. It doesn't really end at two. It like evolves. It just kind of changes. They're to like, a it's like Pokemon. Sort of. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> the um. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I mean, uh, do you? I, I feel like one of the bright lights or bright moments or whatever, however I want to phrase this, the bright or um just something good that came out of COVID is probably that you have a little bit more time. Um, or is that, am I just being that you're actually, yeah. well, being, a, you're actually doing rotations. You might not, I feel like certain other jobs, no, you know, get more time. No, I, I would totally agree with you. It's, it's actually been really nice. Like we've had a ton more time than we would have had otherwise. Like we, you know, I, we were actually I mean, we were fully online for like the first three months when, you know, kind of pandemic started. So I was home. My wife was home at that point as well. Um, And then because I get her, like her work, let her stay home because she was, again, like towards the end of her, her pregnancy and with everything going on, they were like, cool. Like, yeah, you can just kind of call, call it quits now. And then she's been home ever since the, the uh, baby, the baby was born. So like, she's been home a lot. And I, I, yeah, I've been home a lot too. A lot of stuff's been converted to online, you know, lots more zooms now. So it's yeah. like, um, this year did, I would totally agree. So, silver lining of this year has been a lot more like home family time. I mean, sure. It's boring at times and you know, you can't really go do all the fun things you want to do because the outside world is not on the same page, but, um, it's still special, you know, in, in a certain sort of way. I'm glad you said silver lining. Cause that was literally the word I was thinking um yeah <laughs> but uh i feel like yeah that that's like the two contrasting where some people are like oh i'm stuck at home with my wife blah 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 and then there's the yeah. people who are like yeah i get all this extra free time you know to to be with my family so it's it i think it's what you make of it truthfully yeah. exactly definitely exactly yeah. so marty chris is there anything else that's on your mind Anything you want to talk about? Anything. What else was you got? Is that I mean, it? Well, I wanted to say that um, I had the thought. I actually really love talking to you guys and talking to people. Like, you know, I've done after, you know, I did this big, you know, I ran really well in this race. I was the seventh fastest guy in the U.S. now. Um, I did a lot of podcasts. Yes. And, it was, and even any interviews that I do as part of running, it's always with running people, right? Always with like running nerd type folks who, you know, like myself, I'm not making fun of my, my people, but um, <laughs> it was actually really nice and refreshing to talk to you guys and get to like get questions that I feel like mo- like a lot of people have that, that I can answer and like, you know, kind of hit on some, some other things and get some other per- perspectives. I feel like Chris, you, you definitely said some some cool stuff that i feel like a lot of people would would agree with and have the same the same kind of mindset about so yeah i thought that was really cool yeah i appreciate it man yeah i appreciate it definitely like to i mean i think we've had a lot of like artists and and creatives in like the the sphere that we're in so it's cool to get somebody that's in a different niche than us and um hopefully like some people will enjoy 
like what you were saying too. I think I totally think that um, because even though we're in two separate worlds, I think the mentality is still kind of the same where, you know, if you, if you love something, you're going to go for it. Um, no matter like what obstacles, struggles, injuries, all those things, you know, it kind of like leads you to the path. So, right. Right. I mean, that's a, that, that's just passion, right? Like yeah. passion for, 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 for what we do. I feel like that's something that can't be taught. If you really want to go for it, you're going to be going for it. Right. Right. But well, Marty, that said, you're... we got to get you guys in like kind of like the sport market, you know, making some, I don't know, like there's some like random stuff that I've seen in, in, in our world, at least, you know, we got to, we, we got to collab. <laughs> Dude, I'm all for it. I would love it. I'm totally. I can't wait to like, I mean, like when this is all, uh, I hate to use the cliche that that's like thrown around, but like when it, everything goes back to normal, yes. um, yeah. um, yeah. but you know, when we can get back to a sense of like where you, or we feel comfortable to meet up with other people that are outside of your immediate bubble, you know, and, uh, not the fear of like, you're bringing a disease home to kill uh, a loved one. Um, we can't wait till we can like take this show, this product that we're trying to like make here and bring it to real life events and like do things that are outside of our zoom calls. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And I think that's the real, that's when the the real fun with this will really start happening. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, no, we would definitely yeah. which, like, which, which, which... what? Sorry. Sorry. Get you off there. Um, oh no, no I'm but, done. like, 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 what I'm saying is I feel like that's like a kind of like another silver lining of this whole thing is like, you know, people being stuck inside wanting to like do these things. It's like, it, it's got people like, I feel like it's lighting a lot of fires under people's asses that, that like, like, look like, man, we got big, you know, it, it, it's got people like thinking, thinking big, wanting to like be extra creative, want to do all these big things like when they can, cause like we haven't been able to do these things in so long. So I feel like there's going to be this really cool kind of like explosion of just cool shit happening in yeah. the next couple of years mm-hmm. as people, you know, I've had time to like, you know, they've had a year to just, just scheme. You right. Know? I've just, I've been yeah. writing this pilot and then I'm finally going to go do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I definitely think there's going to be a burst of creativity and even like right now, like doing podcasts or like people streaming games, like there's a lot of ingenuity going on because they have to, you know, do the creative aspect of something in a certain bubble or they're figuring out ways to, you know, do it safely. Yeah. So it, it, it's just, obviously the world was turned on its head and different industries have been affected differently, but it, it's, it's a way that we have to figure things out for right now. And when not it, for other two, if you're, if you're in Philly and that's where you're going to be for a, a hot minute. Oh, um, I know where you're going with this. And I'm we, totally we, on board. we could, we could possibly one like I said, where it's all said and good. Philly, we we Philly could be done in a day. We can get there. We can make something happen, you know. And the reason why I agree to that is because they have some some damn good cheesesteaks. So, yeah. <laughs> I actually live, um, like I'm in South Philly, and and Gino's and Pat's are like the two like like you know famous cheesesteak places right across the street. And like I'm all, I'm I don't know three quarters of a mile away from them. Um, damn, so that's oh, not even really? a far run for you. So you just run, grab one. And then oh, go on just, about the rest oh, of your run. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say I've been to uh, I've been to Gino's before. You've been to Gino's, you know. Yeah. I, you know, everyone's got to weigh in. I like Gino's more than Pat's, but I don't know if you've had Pat's. You know, if you I have not, but I want to. Well, yeah. I, I hope I hope you don't get canceled off of that. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Right. No, I I definitely I think I've been I've been to one of them after like a a frisbee meet, but I don't remember which one we went to truthfully. And then I was there a year or two ago and it was just late at night and we were about to go to one of them and the line was just crazy long and we still had like three hours to travel back home. So we just went to this like off brand one. And let me tell you, I was not, not very impressed. I was a little disappointed. Not satisfied. Not satisfied at all. Oh, I'm sorry. You're yeah. So sorry. sorry. You know, it's, you don't be scared away by the long lines. They're like, they pride themselves in, quick. in like, in so fast. Like my first time going, I didn't know this. And like, I like, you know, I kind of, they're, they're like, what do you want? I'm like, oh, um, I'll take a <laughs> cake. Um, 
And then I'm looking at the cheese. I'll just take like a normal cheesesteak, I, I said, right? And then I'm looking at the cheese options. There's like cheese whiz and provolone. And then literally in, in the, the 10, not even 10 seconds, I was like, oh, actually, can I get maybe like the provolone? And she already, someone was slapping a sandwich in her hand. And she's like, here you go. She kind of like knew I was going to ask for something different and just hand it to me. Anyway. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's that's how it was when we went to Gino's. Like we were yeah. watching other people order before us. Yeah. And they're like, what do you want? And they're like, ah, blah, 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 blah. Boom, done. What do you want? This. And I'm like, I'm talking with my wife now, but she was my girlfriend then. And I'm like, you better know what the hell you want to eat. Cause like, they're not playing no fucking games once <laughs> yeah, you get up there. <laughs> that's the Philly life right there for you. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah I think, yeah. I, I, I think, it was just being so late. I was just like exhausted. I knew I had to drive back that I was like, should we really wait? Should we? And then looking back, you know, hindsight's 2020. So yeah, I wish I would have waited knowing what I got. <laughs> yeah. So. That's all right. That's all right. There, there's always, always another trip to Philly to be had. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Absolutely. So Marty, we appreciate you taking the time to talk with us. Absolutely. No, thank you guys, we, guys so much. Um, Definitely uh, continued success. All the blessings in the world. Hope uh, hope the journey is is as fruitful as it's been. Good luck with the uh, the trials coming up. Exactly. Thank you very much. Thank you. No, as always, I wish the best, and I love following along. Iconic vision, and, and you know, you guys. I you know, I I'm on your guys' social media. I like seeing what comes down the uh, pipeline. So. I appreciate it. Uh, I wish the best. For, you know, a happy new year, happy 2021 to to uh, all of us. Right. Yes. yes, likewise, sir. And like I said, this will be because now you have been a uh, a guest on the show. You now may be, hopefully, you know, if everything works right, a recurring person on the show. And um, this will not be the last time we will we will check in and ask for your presence. Yes, that's you know I would be honored. I'd be honored, and hopefully I'll have that. a little bit of Wi-Fi next time. Oh, it's all right. <laughs> it happens to the best of us. <laughs> So, all right, gentlemen. Appreciate it. Marty McFly, I thank you again. Thanks, guys. That was cool. Yeah.